Hey everybody, this is Tony, and I'm here today with a special guest, Ms. Maxine Jones. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Tony. Oh, that's great. Thanks for having um, me. Uh, no problem at all. I'm glad to have you here today with us. Um, so now, everybody most knows you from the group in Vogue, you know, but now you're coming out as a solo artist, um, and you have your new single out, Did and I. Now, what is this song about? This song is about a woman who basically have she's given everything she possibly could to her relationship, and there's nothing else she can do. It's just it's not working. So you know, and she's tried everything, and she's you know did everything and did it again and hung in there. And you know, it's just time to let it go, and and she acknowledges that, and she's cool with that, and she just lets it go. Right, right. Okay, so now this is this is the uh, first single that you have. Are, are you uh, current? Are you going to do an album, or what are we planning on doing? We're doing a record. We're doing an entire album. I, okay. Actually, I'm headed to California uh, at the end of this month to complete the entire project. Okay. And because I'm going to be in the mix of things, I'm going to be working with a lot of producers. Um, well, I'm going to be working with one main producer, and that's DJ King Assassin. And, okay. and we're pulling in a bunch of uh, writers and artists to collaborate with um, and also to co-produce along with him. Mm -hmm. And um, and we should have this project finished really soon. Okay, so what can people expect from this um, record? Like, what kind of songs will you be doing? Are they love songs, up tempo songs? What kind of songs? Well, they're they're love songs. They're up tempo. They're dance songs. They're message songs. Um, and it's gonna be it's gonna touch on a bunch of different genres: uh, R&B, okay. soul, rock and roll, hip hop. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna just get and immerse myself into the creativity of the project. I can't really say in advance what it's gonna be until I get into it. So right. That's about. That's what the creative process is all about, you know. And right, right. But I, I'm open to all of it. So and and I I hope it touches on all kinds of uh, areas and uh, subject matter and everything because mm -hmm. uh, it it totally will show my diversity. Basically. Right. Now you now you coming from a group? Is it um uh, is it a, a scary situation for you to now be? To come out as a solo artist by yourself? Well, uh, just a little bit at first it was it, not scary so much, but just different. Because, of course, for 25 years, I had the <clears throat> girls behind me and around me. Right. We shared uh, the, uh, we shared the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The, you know, the, the entire, we shared what it took to be on stage as a unit. So, right. you know, I never felt like, uh, you know, under pressure because I had my girls um, right, inside right. of me to share what that meant to produce and to project and to present, you know, what we had to offer out there to the crowd. It's a little different having to do it all by myself this time. Um, you know, but, the you know, each time I do it, I get better and better at it. Right, Plus I have right. all those years ex of experience behind me, so it's not that foreign to me to to be out there on my own, uh, mm -hmm. and and it's it's just it's great, you know. Um, the I'm 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 it's good. That's all I'll say. I'm I'm it's not totally new, and I can do it. <laughs> okay. So why did you why do you feel like now is the time for you to come out as a solo artist? Well, you know it. it it wasn't a planned thing for me. I never intended to leave the group. You know, my it was working as far as I was concerned because I got a chance to sing leads, you know, as well right. as be a part of the background. So I wasn't, I didn't feel like, oh, I really want to be solo because maybe someone else was out front more than me. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt like we all had the opportunity to share uh, the leads. And so... I, I was okay with that um, okay. because of what I went through with the group, you know, we had irreconcilable differences and that caused me to part with the girls. So now I have no other choice, but to be out there on my own 
And so I'm, I'm, I have no other choice but to embrace it. And here I am. Right, right. So, uh, but during the, during the time that you were in the group, you didn't think of like, you know, trying to do something on your own or just, you know, putting something out for people who might have wanted to hear you only? No, I, you know, I, I didn't feel the need to because I felt like okay. we all shared it, you know. Um, okay. There were different times in the group where I felt like because of the circumstances that we had in front of us um, that I may need to do that because I wasn't so happy with how the arrangement of what was happening with us at the time, what was going going on with this at the time I wasn't so satisfied with so it crossed my mind that maybe I I may have to let this whole thing go and be on my own mm-hmm. you know, and only in that sense did it come you know to my mind that you know I, I really need to be thinking about being on my own um, and and then it came to fruition here in 2012 where I, I had no other choice and here I am not on my own right so now, c- coming from a group and going to a solo artist, what is the biggest lesson you have learned since being with the group and now solo? Well, the biggest lesson, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, uh, uh, the lesson I have learned, um, the lesson, you know, I can't really say what that lesson is, but, um, well, the lesson, yeah, I can say that the lesson is to always be prepared, you know, okay. um, be prepared for, for a situation exactly like what I'm going through right now. You know, um, if I had been in my right mind and prepared, I think mm-hmm. this transition that I'm going through right now would have been a lot smoother. So right. um, I would say definitely Um, stand on your own, be ready, always be independent to let it all go and to have a backup plan. You know, I, I, that's the biggest lesson. I have a, an 18 year old right now that's going off to college, you know? And and so, and that's the thing that I tell her, you know, I, I never encouraged her to be in the music game because I felt like she needed to have something real and substantial that she can fall back on and to really focus on what was real. Mm-hmm. You know, the rest is, is a talent. It's, it's a, um, you know, it's a, uh, what do you call it? A hobby. It's a, right. you know, something that you love, but the reality of the situation is that you need to have something to fall back on, especially when it comes to the music business. And so, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think, you know, in the 25 years I've been doing this, if I had really thought that out and prepared, that would be the lesson is to, you know, totally be prepared for the unexpected. Okay. Now, uh, what what would you say um, are the goals that you have for your solo career and your solo projects? Well, my goals are mostly to just focus on the music. That's my goal is to mm-hmm. create good music because I just feel that, if the music is superb and top top of the you know top notch right top and the focus that and the focus that uh you know the rest will follow um right so so that's that's what i'm focused on that's what i i you know that's that's my thing is getting in that studio and making sure that what i create you know that i can stand behind um you know, and I feel good about, and that's also my favorite part of this whole aspect of the music industry is creating. Mm-hmm. The really wonderful thing is, uh, you know, being able, and this, which is different from the past, is being able to do it exactly the way I want and work with the people that I want to work with. And, you know, to do it exactly the way I want to do it. And right, so... Right. That's what that's what my focus is. All right. Now, since you you left the group uh, in vogue in 2012, uh, now that you set into the realization of becoming your own and you know going into your own solo project, do you kind of sort of miss the group aspect sometimes? Actually, no. You know, I've done it for so long. I don't miss mm-hmm. it. 
Um, I, oh. I'm, I, it's actually, I'm discovering that being on my own is so much better because again, I can right. do it exactly the way I want to do it. You know, I, right. I don't right. have to disagree or compromise with anybody else except mm-hmm. for who I want to. You know? <laughs> and, and, and when I say that, I mean, you know, there's always going to be people there that are more experienced mm-hmm. than me. And so I look up to them and, and I'm old open and receptive to, you know, any kind of uh, creative feedback and suggestions and criticism. Right. So, you know, other than that, you know, I feel like I'm on my own and it's totally up to me what I decide to do and, and ultimately what ends up on that record and, and, and that I can stand behind it. And, and so that's, that's, uh, and that I love that. I love, okay. you know, being able to do that. It is, I didn't have that in the past. Like, you know, someone else were, was making those decisions. I didn't have the final say so. Um, and, and honestly, the group didn't have the final say so. So, right. you know, we, we, we were put together. Um, and, and so we had to go with that. And I'm not looking right. forward to going back to anything other than especially experiencing what I'm experiencing right now. I, I mm-hmm. love this. I want to do this more. I want to embrace this more. And I'm looking forward to more of this. So, Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, what is, what is your relationship like with uh, Cindy and Terry now? It's not very good. Um, okay. I We are still in the middle of working out our irreconcilable difference that we mm-hmm. have that caused me to be on the outside. And, uh, and that hopefully is going to be settled really soon now in the next couple of months. I'm looking forward to that so I can put it behind me. Right. But I, I don't have a relationship with any of the girls right now. I'm on my own. Okay. So not even Dawn? Not even with Dawn. Nope. Oh, okay. I know that you guys were close after you both left. So, okay. Yeah, we tried. <laughs> I tried, certainly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, but now Dawn did uh, R&B Divas uh, Atlanta, or no, L.A., excuse me, um, and it seems that she regretted the decision afterward, but would you do the, a show like that? Yeah, you know, um, certainly I would. I, I'm, I'm nothing like Dawn. I'm totally different than Dawn. I think that it would be a great platform for me. Mm-hmm. I, have a, uh, I have a product to sell. Um, I have an agenda. Right. And I think that that's what you use that kind of thing for. And um, actually, I, I was invited to uh, be a part of a couple of episodes of the upcoming upcoming season. And, okay. And I hope that happens uh, again because you know I have I I have a product to sell. I'm looking forward right. forward to that. Hopefully. Yeah. And the thing about it is, see, you know who you are, and you're securing yourself already. See, you're old enough, exactly. so yeah, you have nothing to worry about. I don't have anything to worry about. I'm looking forward to it. Right, right. So now, what would you say um, is the biggest mistake that groups make, if you could say there is one? Uh oh, you're breaking up a little. The biggest mistake oh. that groups make. And what else? Yeah. What, the, what would you say is the biggest mistakes that groups make? If you could say there is one. Well, you know, the biggest mistake that groups make, I would say, is not sticking together. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you there are so many outside forces, especially if once you become successful to tear you apart. And, right. And and they come in all forms and from all directions. But you got to stick together you got to have a purpose you know it's like a company a company can't be successful if you got not everybody thinking in terms of making the company successful you know and and what the people around who try to interfere and take away from it don't realize is if that you can't even come back to it if it doesn't if it's broken and split apart right you right. know and so everyone around who's on the outside of that group should also support the group sticking together no matter where exactly. they are you know and so and and that's the thing you that would be my advice to any group up and coming do not let anyone come in for any reason 
no matter what they put in your head and try and tear you apart. If you're not thinking as one, then you always, there's always a chance of you being divided. And, and I, I feel that's exactly what happened to us at every stage, you know, um, okay. is, is, uh, and uh, outside influences coming in, trying to tear us apart. You know, if 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 we can't be s- successful with them, they'd rather see us torn apart. They try and tear mm-hmm. us apart themselves at every chance they could, and that's right. what we were a victim to, and that's what all groups typically are a, a victim to, unless they're strong enough. You know, usually mm-hmm. the strongest groups to me that I've seen in the past are groups that are family because blood always comes before any of those outside forces. Sometimes, you know, sometimes exactly. that can come in there. But, uh, you know, if you can manage it's It's just difficult for that particular reason, you know. Uh, right. right. Certainly for us as a group, because we were put together. We weren't childhood mm-hmm. friends. You know, we were totally put together. Those auditions in 1989, we all came together. Um, And so, you know, in that sense, we were kind of (laughs) doomed. Right, right. But I think a lot of people looked up to you all because you kind of set the blueprint for girl groups in the 90s. Because you guys started off in, what, 89, 90? And it seemed as if you guys kind of set the blueprint for girl groups then. And then you became one of the biggest selling girl groups. And then it's like, you know, you had your demise, which was like, you know, not so good. Right. So I think a lot of people just wanted to see you all come back together and be a collective unit as you were before. Now, speaking of collective units, uh, in 2008, you guys did the BET Awards together. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what what happened with that situation to make you all come together to do that? Well, you know, Alicia Keys, that. That's what happened. She was a big phenomena and role model, you know, uh, an idol that all of us looked up to. And so we were totally appreciative of her calling us out, basically, and saying that, you know, we were her idols and and Mm -hmm. she wanted to do this particular presentation on the BET Awards to feature her idols, us along with SWV and uh, uh, TLC. TLC. Exactly. Right. You know, and, and, and honestly, all of us felt like it was quite an honor and we felt like it was a good cause for us to call, come together. And so we all embraced it. We were really excited and honored, basically. And so okay. we did just that. It just made everyone feel like, yeah, this is, this is a good reason to bring it all back together. Okay. Okay, so now you have, um, like I said, you have your new single out, Did It I. If you haven't bought it, make sure you go and get it on iTunes, um, Maxine Jones, Did It I. Um, and now you're working on your new album, your solo album. Yes. Um, so after this, what are you looking forward to in your solo career, in your career period? Well, you know, um, like I, I said before, I, I love being in the studio recording and creating and, and mm-hmm. that's what I look forward to the most, more than anything, is creating music. I mean, that's the thing that inspired me to be in this business in the first place, um, is singing and using my voice. Um, there are a lot of opportunities that are coming my way right now, like um, television, radio, right. um, you know. And But I think the thing that makes me most excited is getting in that studio and recording And just Mm -hmm. my goal, you know, it's not going to end for me or stop for me after this project. You know, there are a lot of artists I want to work with. Um, There are a lot of people coming at me with uh, stuff they want to do with me musically. And I feel like that's going to be an ongoing thing. Um, What I would ultimately ultimately love to do is to uh, have my own studio and to make Mm -hmm. it so that I am you know, from this point forward, just creating, 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 and putting out music, music, music. That's my goal. That's the thing I'm working toward. So that's, that's, you know, what I pray that you all and my fans will constantly get from me is music, music, music. Okay. So now as a solo artist and as a person, period, what do you want people to know about Maxine Jones now that they didn't know before? That I can sing. You know, okay. that, that my voice is real. 
Um, it wasn't masked with anything, you know, I, I, I want them to know that, that I'm also, I can, I can do this by myself. I'm independent, you know? Right. Um, you know, that they can depend on me for vocals, great vocals, ver- uh, you know, musical, great vocals in, a, in, in, in terms of me, you know, it wasn't just a, what do you call it, fluke, that, mm-hmm. you know, the group was put together and, you know, and that's it. Now that the group isn't, uh, all four members are together, that I can't go out on my own. I'm a vocalist, I'm a musician, and I want them to know that and respect that about me. The blessing, you know, about being on my own right now after 25 years is the fact that the fans are still out there for me. I just really honor that, and I don't take it for granted, and I want to live up to that. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal, and and I want to prove it. Okay. Now, what? but what made you decide to want to audition for a girl group when you first uh went to go to that audition what made you want to do that well i had i had i had been performing um okay. you know i i had i started out in oakland california san francisco bay area uh okay performing uh singing first in college you know taking classes in college and under direct under the direction of a great musical director there for the college was Jacqueline Butler Hairston who encouraged me. She she saw the talent that I naturally had and helped me develop it and uh, put Mm -hmm. me, you know, I I was just immersed around some really great, great talented people in her presence that was around her. And she put me around these people and it inspired me to want to do this myself. That was the first thing. So, you know, be, I had been performing for a good at least uh, five years, uh, singing background uh, with so many talented Bay Area musicians. Uh, mm-hmm. And and the auditions were like a byproduct, you know, had gone to several auditions. And that was just one of many I had been a right. part of. And I made that one that turned out to be for something really, really real, which was uh, mm-hmm. the girl group. So I, I had right. been doing it. Okay. Now, looking back over your entire career, would you say that everything that you have been through was worth it? Well, yeah, you know, um, it was worth it. Everything was worth it because, you know, everything is in divine order. I really mm-hmm. feel that, you know, every there are no mistakes. You know, even everything that I've gone through with these girls and where I am at this position, I think it was time, you know. We had our irreconcilable differences, but if I hadn't gone through those irreconcilable differences even, I wouldn't be where I am right now, standing on my own two feet. And right, I, right. I think that um I think that's divine. Um you know, and so I, 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 it wasn't easy to embrace that at first or to realize that because, of course, you know, I'm, I'm only my, my vision is, uh, is, is shallow compared mm-hmm. to spirit, you know, and so I think that the divine plan was for me to, to grow and to do something different, and I, and I feel like I'm where that is possible right now. I'm, I'm in a place where that. For me to grow and be bigger and better and to do more is is possible right now. And so I, I'm embracing where I am right now. Absolutely. Now, if you if you could describe yourself in just three words, what would they be? Um, ready, willing, and able. <laughs> That's what first All right. comes to my mind. Ready. Willing and able. All right, well, those are good, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to thank you so much for being here and doing this with me today. I know you have so much to do that you could be doing, and I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this with me. Um, this is Maxine Jones, everybody. Make sure you go and buy her single, Did an Eye, on iTunes, and look out for her new record. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you giving me this platform, too. And I want to thank all the fans for still being there after all these years and giving me all your love and support. I really appreciate it. 
No problem at all. Um, listen, if you need anything uh, promoted or anything like that or you need people to know about, please don't hesitate to email me or send it to me. I will put it out there. Um, anything you need at all. Thank you so much, Tony. I appreciate it. So, no problem at all. You have a blessed day. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.